Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Talk Spicy. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining me. Wherever you're joining me, rate the show, comment, agree, disagree, but whatever you do, keep it spicy. Five-star ratings are appreciated. And if you're joining me on my YouTube channel, leave a comment. Hit that um, subscription. Hit that, hit that like, you know. Do all those things to make the algorithm go, algorithm go crazy. I appreciate it. It's time to get back in the lab. And, and, and what do I mean when I say get back in the lab? I just see a lot of people putting the cart before the horse um, in, in preps. And, and everybody who knows knows that I coach. Um, and I've been around um, prep and youth sports my entire life. Um, I see a lot of posts about, oh, I'm going to this camp. Oh, I'm going to this workout, or I'm going to this seven on seven, I'm going to this team camp. And I keep trying to figure out exactly if this, if, if every single day all you're doing is posting about the places that you're going, when are you actually doing any work? It's time to get back in the lab. I was telling, I was saying the other day that, you know, when you're hungry, you have to eat, but, but in order to eat, Somebody has to cook the food. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times in life, we're left to wait for somebody else to chef the meal because we can't cook ourselves. But if you can cook yourselves, you can eat. If you can cook yourself, you can eat as much as you want. What, what we're seeing right now, people wanting to give the impression of or give the illusion of that things are happening that are not happening. Um, it's the fake it until you make it kind of theory. And, and while I'm not here to rain on anybody's parade, here's what it really comes down to. If you keep on tweeting or throwing on your Instagram or throwing in your Facebook about visits that you're taking to colleges, about conversations that you're having with college coaches, and it's not turning into a scholarship offer. If there's just a bunch of conversation or, hey, thanks for looking out. I'm going to put this random image that you created that's supposed to be me, but it's really just the same image you send to every single kid. If all of those things if it are happening, but none of it is returning a scholarship offer, then it's probably time to get back to the lab. It's probably time to start thinking less about posting that stuff and more about, okay, how do I get better? How do I, how do I turn conversations into offers? How do I turn visits into offers? And here's the trick. It's not by taking more visits. It's not by continuing to sit on the phone. It's about hanging up the phone. It's about getting off the road and actually putting in work. If you're going to a seven on seven and you're a backup receiver or a backup DV, DB, why are you at that seven on seven again? I'm talking about these all-star teams that you actually have to you know, pay to be on. If you're the backup quarterback or the third string quarterback on a seven on seven team, exactly why are you there? You couldn't find another seven on seven team that needed a, a quarterback that you could actually go and get better on. No, you couldn't. You know why? Because you're not on that seven on seven team to get better. You're on that seven on seven team for exposure. But how can you get exposed if nobody sees you? That's the question that you need to ask yourselves. How do I get exposure if nobody sees me because I'm not playing? So now not only are you not getting exposure, but you're not getting any better. It's time to get back to the lab. If you are a starting wide receiver on a seven on seven team and you go to the seven on seven and the entire week, the entire weekend, you come up with five, six catches maybe one touchdown, two touchdowns, 
it's time to get back in the lab. You're not elite. You need to go. I don't care who you play, who you play with. Oh, but I play with a bunch of dogs. Guess what? If you play with a bunch of dogs and your stats look like that, you're not the dog. Go back to work. It's not a diss. And it's not saying that you should not do these things. It's saying that you should have a healthy balance. The, the football offseason or the basketball offseason is not should not be spent totally playing games. Competition is great, and you should have competition to help you get better at competing. But what you really need to do is work on your craft, and you can't work on your craft when you're at – it's not working on, fat, on, on your craft when you're at these tournaments because it should be all about winning once you go to these tournaments. Once you spend your hard-earned money on these tournaments. If you are breaking bread in the upwards of $5,000 over the summer going to various tournaments, what are you getting for your money? Because I know what you could be getting for your money, top-notch training. If you think about, okay, I'm going to go to four I'm going to go to four seven on sevens or four camps. Each one of those, you know, competition camps is a few hundred dollars. I know what you could get for that thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Top level training. You can get a really beautiful 10 sessions of, of, of elite training from an elite trainer that's going to be able to spend their time. If you can't, then go somewhere else that, that will give you 10, 15 sessions for that $1,000. Trust me, they're out there. Call me. But it's time to get back in the lab. It's time to go to work because at the end of the day, what you do in seven on sevens, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they publish. Eventually, they want to see you play real football. Eventually, what you're doing in the T-shirt short Olympics, that's not going to matter. So what do you do when the lights go on and the whistle blows and it's time to line up and people could take your head off in a sport that you can die? That's what people want to know. What do you do when the stakes are on the line? That's how you inspire. That's how you get the offer and not just the call. That's how you get the offer and not just the, the, the email with the image on it that they send to everybody. It's time to get back in the lab. Now, we, we look at um, just recently, Jackson State had um, their, their, their number one wide receiver, a guy who I believe actually transferred to Jackson State, had a ton of had a ton of success, and then, like that, transferred to Michigan. And, and I apologize. I'm actually looking up the um, receiver's name right now because I want to make sure I get it right. Um, Dalen Baldwin. Dalen Baldwin last year balled out for Jackson State. Balled out to the level of, man, that guy is going to be a, a, a an NFL um, draft pick. So he had already ascended to that to that level at Jackson State under the toolage of the Jackson State coaching staff, Deion Sanders and company. Um, I believe they have a really good wide receivers coach there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he had the opportunity to ball out at Jackson State. He's a junior, right? So he's a junior. The year before at Morgan State, because he transferred from Jackson State, I mean, from Morgan State to Jackson State. At Morgan State, as a junior, 
He played 14 games. He caught 14 passes for 152 receiving yards. One touchdown. His freshman year, 11 games, 16 passes, 181 receiving yards, one touchdown. At Jackson State. At Jackson State, let's see. Because we have to deal with the um the statistics of you know some of these some of these sites that unfortunately don't necessarily give us the best look in the world. Um Jackson State, he had a season high, um, 136 receiving yards in one game, three receiving touchdowns in one game, 27 total receptions on the season, 540 yards, seven touchdowns. And then after he has this stellar year for Jackson State, that puts him on the map nationally. That gave him a national, gave him national exposure. You know what he did? He took his talents to Michigan, where he will have to compete with not only the wide receivers who are there, that are all really good, really high um, guys, but he'll also have to compete with the new guys that are coming in that will be four-star and maybe five-star and three-star wide receivers. Why would he do that? Because everybody wants to go to the level that they think gets them closer to the prize. We call this thing cutting off your nose to spite your face. He's the, he's the bona fide number one at Jackson State. He's the bona fide number one at Jackson State. He's going to walk into Michigan, not the bona fide number one. Can he ascend to the number one? Yes, he's a talented receiver. He could. Are there other really talented receivers at Michigan? Absolutely. Is it going to be a dogfight? You darn well bet it's going to be a dogfight. But he at least he gets to say he played at Michigan. At least he gets to say he's a Michigan man. And this, my friends, is why HBCUs have such a difficult issue competing. Because you get guys like this young man who get wooed by the higher level school. And why and, and, and everybody looking, well, why would he not go? Of course he should go. Yes, of course he should go, right? He should, yeah. That makes sense. He should. Except the grass is not always greener on the other side. I'll be watching. I want to see what he does. I'm rooting for him to be successful. But I won't be surprised if he gets caught up in just being another guy where he could have been the man at Jackson State. Those are those are the things that we have to weigh when we make these decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been Talk Spicy. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining us. Wherever you join us, rate the show, comment, agree, disagree, but whatever you do, keep it spicy. A five-star rating is appreciated. And if you're joining me on my YouTube channel, rate the show, comment, like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a comment, definitely. We'll see you all later on this week. Peace.